Scared Straight programs are interventions aimed at preventing further crime and delinquency for at-risk youths. The model of program intervention that has been fairly popular for several decades now originates from a 1979 documentary also titled Scared Straight, and the programs adhere to methods presented in the film quite closely, though they are less confrontational than they once were. The goal of Scared Straight programs such as Beyond Scared Straight are generally to deter at-risk youths and hopefully prevent them from engaging in future criminal activity. The programs make use of prison inmates to share testimonies and attempt to intimidate the at-risk youths brought to the facility, often in a fairly confrontational manner, though there doesn't appear to be too much physical interaction between the youths and the inmates. Generally, the youths who are selected for the program have been recommended by their families, and while some have committed more serious crimes than others, most aren't necessarily considered delinquents quite yet. This certainly does fit with the aim of the program, which is meant to deter youths from engaging in criminal activity by demonstrating firsthand the possible consequences of their actions. And I would intuitively think that teenagers who haven't engaged in serious criminal offenses would be somewhat more likely to alter their life course. However, the problem with these programs is that they are largely based on the reported success of the original program and documentary as well as the intuition that exposing at-risk youths to what their life could be like if they continue engaging in criminal activities, and not as much on empirical data. Studies that have examined the long-term effectiveness of scared straight programs tend to find little to no positive outcomes for the programs, with several studies suggesting the programs may have actually increased the participants' likelihood to continue engaging in criminal activity. An episode of Beyond Scared Straight I watched recently was fascinating, as it appeared as though the teenagers were more responsive when the inmates were calm, collected, and recounting their stories of hardship and crime that led to where they currently are. I found those sections of the program to be much more impactful than when inmates were acting like crazy animals that just wanted to tear the teenagers apart. At least one of the teenagers in the episode began sobbing, and many of the others expressed being terrified of the whole experience. This gave me mixed feelings about the program detached from empirical data, as I can see how the program could potentially be beneficial as well as harmful. The testimonials and experiences of the inmates that participate in the program can be powerful, and do seem to impact some of the youths. Moreover, it does also appear to be a positive opportunity for many inmates, as it allows them to try and deter at-risk youths from making the same mistakes and choices they did. The one-month follow-up after the prison visit also seems like a good choice as determining whether or not the program is effective is important. Though, I do worry that the episode only focused on the youths who appeared to have changed for the better following their participation in the program. Furthermore, the intimidation and confrontational nature of much of the program leaves a bad taste in my mouth, as I don't personally believe that this will be as effective as educating them about life in prison. While some of the teenagers did seem scared and deterred, at least for the time being, I also think experiences like this could embolden some at-risk youths to continue engaging in criminal activities, as they may only want to further try and prove their toughness. While completely anecdotal, I find it relevant to mention I am someone of the mindset that almost always wants to go against what others tell me to do, like it's a knee-jerk reaction. And I just think that the confrontational nature of the program could also bring that out in some of the teenagers. As previously mentioned, most studies investigating the effectiveness of scared straight programs such as Beyond Scared Straight, have found little to no effect in reducing future criminal activity of the youths who participated in the programs. Since the year 2000, meta-analyses of Scared Straight programs have found that programs such as Scared Straight and their derivatives not only show little deterrent effect, but very likely cause more harm than good. In several of the studies investigated, participants of the Scared Straight programs engaged in criminal activity at a slightly higher rate than control groups, Many of the studies reviewed in the 2000 meta-analysis had 3-month and 6-month follow-up periods, which is more than the scared straight programs typically employed. One of the more shocking findings was a study that found 41% of scared straight participants to have committed new offenses compared to 11% of the control group. Though these findings are fairly dated and perhaps the programs have improved and subsequently perhaps the outcomes have as well. More recent meta-analysis of scared straight programs from Campbell Systematic Reviews looked at nine studies investigating the effectiveness of these programs, and once again found them to be more harmful than beneficial. The primary finding of the review can be summed up quite nicely when the authors state, Reoffending rates showed that the intervention significantly increased the odds of offending on the part of both the juveniles and pre-delinquents. 
I had always heard that scared straight programs were not very effective, and these studies certainly reinforced that message. The program itself has been found to be more harmful than simply not intervening in the lives of at-risk youths at all, which makes me question why the popularity of the programs has remained so strong for so long, despite the lack of empirical evidence to support the continuation of the programs. In fact, it appears as though empirical data and studies have tended to discredit the effectiveness of scared straight programs, though programs like Beyond Scared Straight have still remained quite popular in culture. I personally wonder if the effectiveness of the programs almost didn't matter as much as the media popularity, as the evidence clearly isn't in favor of the scared straight programs. However, programs such as Beyond Scared Straight are essentially reality television shows, which means it was likely to continue for as long as it was popular enough. Of course, this is my opinion, but the show was very enjoyable to watch, and I can understand how people could love binge-watching and consuming media like Beyond Scared Straight because it's so visceral and has a feeling of authenticity. Thus, the popularity of some of these programs may not be based on effectiveness at all, but rather on the popularity of the original Scared Straight documentary and Beyond Scared Straight. One of the possible reasons discussed in the 2013 meta-analysis for the lack of positive effects from Scared Straight programs could be the brevity of the programs themselves, as participants typically would spend only a few hours in a correctional facility on a single day. The authors of the review argue it's not all too surprising that spending just a few hours in a prison wouldn't have the intended effect of completely changing the behavior and life course of the at-risk teens. The length of the programs is generally extremely short in comparison to almost any other form of therapy or prevention treatment, and involve little substantial follow-up on the participants. Considering the amount of time that is dedicated to other forms of treatment and prevention programs, it's astounding to think that just a few hours in a prison would completely prevent youths from recidivism, as no one expects someone's anxiety or depression to be gone after a single session with a therapist. While not a perfect comparison, treatment and prevention programs of any kind that want to bring about meaningful and lasting change generally are quite intensive and long-lasting, while the scared straight programs are not. Ethical questions about the programs have also been raised, particularly about whether or not it's ethical to expose children to prisons and inmates that may emotionally damage them or embolden them to engage in more criminal activity. I think these ethical considerations could be ameliorated if the programs were reformed and modified, as they still seem to be far too confrontational and about intimidation to truly bring about positive change in the youths who participate. Fear can be a powerful tool, though coupling it with attempts at educating at-risk youths just seems like a poor idea to me, as clearly the intimidation and confrontation from inmates have backfired. If the programs were to focus more on educating the youths rather than attempting to make them straighten out, perhaps the results would be more positive. When watching Beyond Scared Straight, I found it odd that the teenagers were being treated like inmates for the time they were in the prison, as people tend to take on the roles they are given, essentially making the teenagers prisoners may have majorly backfired as they could have internalized some of that role into their own identity. Along with that, the program can almost be viewed as a practice for when the at-risk youths do eventually end up in jail or prison, as they make them experience what it's like to have to live in a jail cell and eat the food the institution provides. I can see how the thought process behind having the participants act as though they are prisoners, though it could very easily have the opposite effect in which participants almost felt more prepared to be incarcerated. As previously mentioned, the 2013 meta-analysis found that it would have been better to do nothing than to have placed at-risk youths in scared straight programs. This finding alone solidifies my belief that the way the program is run is wholly ineffective and more performative than anything. The show Beyond Scared Straight is very entertaining, though the program it is engaging in isn't exactly beneficial and it is perhaps unethical. The program focuses too much on intimidation and confrontation by prison inmates whereas their stories and experiences appear to be far more educational and influential than screaming at teenagers probably ever could be. There certainly is potential to improve upon the concept of scared straight programs, though their brevity and intensity appear more of a motivator than a deterrent. If the programs were to adapt and focus more on educating at-risk youths about the consequences of crime and real people's experiences over long periods of time, I could perhaps see them at least being better than doing nothing to deter or prevent youth crimes.